Okay, this lesson for our Corne project class. We'll be looking at video part four of four as we evaluated pre-tribulation, mid, and post-tribulation as they are each not the same as the other, and yet they all involve the rapture. We're looking at Revelation 3.10, which happens to be uh, much more controversial than I had ever known. I remember when I was teaching this, I was teaching the Ecclesia that if their interest uh, in the future great trial, and if that were the great tribulation period, uh, really wanted to know what's the answer, it would be keep the word uh, of his patience and to be found faithfully doing what this church was commended for having done. So today's lesson, we'll be looking briefly at the language, and then I would like to uh, end with a, an observation by Dr. Rick Howard, and I've got the, uh, he sent me this sheet information, and then I actually have a book uh, outlined and study guide of Revelation that actually mentions that to which he made reference. Though they don't agree, it was still interesting that they referred to the same thing. So Revelation 3.10 is one of the scriptures that the pre-tribulation argument depends on very heavily. Now, not according to uh, Grace Evangelical Society, Dr. Robert N. Wilkin, it doesn't. But what we've learned thus far is the last trumpet equals the seventh trumpet is advocated by mid-trib and post-trib alike. So at this point, there's... Well, we can quantify this. Let's go ahead and do that. 66% of this futuristic, the futurist, the futurist construct concerning the rapture and the three prevalent uh, positions held, 66% uh, there. So trial and or tribulation, pre-trib, Grace Evangelical Society said it's not the tribulation. Some say it's the pre-trib global environment just prior to or at the rapture, meaning what kind of world will we be in by that time and that great trial uh, that uh, pre-trib, one pre-trib advocate said it was for the unsaved on the earth to come to Christ. And then that would be for them, that trial would be like what the tribulation is for Israel. So at this point, we have, uh, looks like a, a split here for this. Now, I didn't expect that. Uh, when it says here, uh, this is one of the pre-tribulation argument depend upon which the pre-tribulation argument depends very heavily. I assumed that as well. I'd never studied this, and I did not even look it up in the Grace New Testament commentary until recently and noticed how Dr. Wilkin had uh, made his case that it wasn't the tribulation. And then I remind you in 1 Thessalonians 4, 17, epeta, then we ourselves, then we ourselves, hoi zontes, the living ones, those who had not died in Christ, the living ones, uh, hoi, the ones, peri, late, you just kind of walk it through, omenoi, the ones remaining around, And then this was the one that really troubled me for a long time. Ama seen didn't trouble me. It was just it had not been readily emphasized simultaneously. And then together with. Yeah, together with. And then it was out toys referring to them speaking of those dead in Christ that had raised first. And then we have this uh, long word here, uh, har, pog, ace, omitha, 
you know, future passive will be seized away, will be seized away, and it was simultaneously together with them. So the dead in Christ are raised and then simultaneously together with them, we will be seized away. So that was very impossible for me to, or anyone using the language, to break apart the return of Christ, the resurrection of the dead in Christ, and the, uh, well, I'll just say the rapture to have three R's. So the, uh, well, I'll borrow this chart for a minute. This means then the return, resurrection, and then the rapture were all simultaneous. That's good. And then, uh, so they couldn't be broken apart. So for post-trib, they had a literal expression. Now, Dr. Wilkin, Dr. J.R. Graves, Dr. Thiessen, uh, address that, which was quite remarkable, that they took responsibility because most people I encounter or look, read after, or even try to have a conversation with, don't even care to address that. So, as far as a post tribber, you'd have a hundred percent in this one text here. Just write it here: a hundred percent that the that when that the resurrection won't occur. And since these occur simultaneously, the return, resurrection, and rapture all occur simultaneously. You have 100% expressly, explicitly stated. That was the word I was looking for. Explicitly stated that that won't occur. Now, looking at ek as far as a temporal term, we'll go back to our text. And that's uh, before I get to this good feedback by uh, Dr. Uh, Rick Howard. We'll go back over here to ek. Out from the hour. So we, we are talking about time. So we have the temporal um, advantage here of what we need in considering when it's temporal. And then here's a text we can look at. Mark 10, 20 says, answering, he said to him, teacher, all these I have kept from my youth. And this was, I think, uh, as in Luke. And he said, all these things I've kept from my youth. That's also the word out from. And then it refers to how long he's done this, speaking of the law and how long he's, has he been uh, keeping, I think it's from Philoso, guarding these things. Yeah, I think it's Tautas there, guarding these things out from his youth. So this is temporal here. And then we notice that means, uh, so we have Tereo is I will keep. It does not, if it were to say I will take, which would be interesting. It would be like this. It would be Aro, yeah, Aro, a uh, future. And that's from Iro. So we have Tereo or this. So we want to ask ourselves if it was what we read into the text, which is eisegesis, and we all do it. Again, when I was teaching, I was trying to emphasize that the solution in this text was not to pick one of these, rather, it was to commit as the church to the keeping of his particular word, which is still the truth. It's it, it, this what this calls us to do. And we all know this. It's not to pick one of these as the solution or to respond to this text, because picking one of these does not equal keeping the word. So what this would have said, though, is it would have said, Aro, because you did this, Aro, yeah, I will take, I will take se, you, and then we would have ek out from. Okay, so that would, that would help us because we can rewrite the text the way we, what we read into it and see how close it matches and no, it does not match. So this is a zero percent. So there's no there's no chance there that it's take out from because there's a lot of argument about the out from. And as a Bible scholar recently reminded me, even keep them out from they're in it. 
they're in it because it's not take them out from. And if that is the exit, it would be take them out from. And that's not it. There was even the text. Uh, one reference was made where Jesus said, I pray that you don't take them out from the world. There it is right there, that word there. So Revelation 3.10 is temporal in a temporal sense. So you have 100% if you're post-trip advocate, supporter. That is, if you were that first and now you're looking for the rationale. And most of us are one of these first. And then we can go and look. That's why it's so easy to see what we're looking for when we've already been primed according to a position. But to then go and look at the grammar. And so so this is in a temporal sense. And you remember they were uh, there during the plagues. And they were undergoing great distress during the plagues until the land of Goshen was their refuge, if you will. And we know plagues are happening in Revelation, but to be kept, I will keep, is tereo, adhere, keep, out from, that would be the same as the statement, I have kept these things and he was talking about guarding. I guarded these things out from my youth. So since his youth, out from that time, he had done that. So that's really a good case if you are wanting a rationale from the language and then knowing it's the hour, we are talking about time. And now we know tereo is the word that's there. Keep, keep, not take there not take so that's really good so now we can go on to something very fascinating i'd never noticed at any time um, the uh, churches in revelation uh, are sometimes uh, well often had been uh, taught to represent periods like laodicea laodicea from 1812 to the present and this uh guide here on Revelation says, we are living in this time period. Many are in this condition. How about you? And it's a challenge. It's a very challenging thing. The end of this period will complete the church age. The time of the Gentiles will be fulfilled. Israel in part is blind during this period of time. Now that's that judicial hardening. We even noticed it in the Bible where it spoke of that. And yet it said, nevertheless, many individuals. Well, Dr. Rick Howard pointed out to hold that this requires a literal escape off the earth is to also require an overall view of these seven churches of making them successive parts of the church age and then making this Philadelphia church to be the church just before and at the rapture. And that's not what we do. We always, and I've heard it, well, I just say all my life, but of course I only heard it as often as I paid attention <laughs> during my lifetime, that we are living in this last church age and the Laodicean church represents that attitude and that that we shouldn't be and that is the thing dr howard points out is that it finally occurred to me it clicked that well we'd have to philadelphia is not that which we tout to be which are the representative of this age in which we are today we're seeing more of the standing away the more apostasy not more of keep the word even if you go on youtube channels and especially in the dispute about uh, the, the free gift of God, faith alone. And you hear some of those uh, YouTubers on their channel, some of them thousands and thousands and thousands of subscribers. They'll just say uh, unapologetically that most churches are preaching works for salvation. And they just make a blanket generalization and observation of what they're seeing and that which they're contending with. And then their, their viewers their tens of thousands of viewers are making comments of their horrible experiences in churches where they taught works, legalism, the Galatian error, uh, performance driven, and all these things of uh, performing to keep your salvation, performing not to lose your salvation, doing different works. But as all of them are noticing, so the condition of churches today, uh, we would agree with this uh, statement made in this book that uh, we are living in this time period. Many are in this condition, and it's a condition that's an indictment uh, concerning uh, Laodicea. Well, Dr. Howard goes on and says, 
a truly faithful church, do we see a truly faithful church? Does this age in which we live now, does the church describe, does this church describe the church as you know? A truly faithful church, question mark. Certainly, there are faithful saints in the churches today, but as a whole, this church describes the church or its uh, in its healthiest condition. Would you say this to be so of the churches today? And that was a fascinating point because you can roll along and hear sermons as I was taught in the seminary often. Well, that's just preaching. Well, it's true. Sometimes we're just preaching away and the preacher's up there preaching about this particular church, Laodicea, for example, and he's really pointing it out. And he's saying, this is what the churches look like in this day and age. And people are stepping away, come, don't care, whatever, indifferent. And then the next moment, you might be over here uh, taking this text and saying, well, this shows that we're not going to be here because they then apply this promise, which would have to be presupposed by this condition having already been met that they've kept the word. So that's a fascinating observation. Also, um, it would make this the last church, Philadelphia, and it says that, uh, it would make Philadelphia the Laodicean church. Well, that's a contradiction. And what what's, uh, and I'll uh, put a link to Truth Be Told is the YouTube channel for uh, Dr. Rick Howard. He also has one, Rick Howard, and he's very mathological, uh, uh, following the script and the logic in it and noticing contradictions. And that's very fascinating. And I'll include um this information in the description so you can look at it. But in conclusion of this very uh, brief review of the positions in relationship to Revelation 3.10, we came to learn things uh, I did not know. I didn't know both mid and post agreed that the last trump and the seventh trumpet are the same. Uh, one last trumpet in the church in Corinth mentioned seventh trumpet mentioned in Revelation. I didn't know there was a division within pre-trib rapture over this trial. Is it the trial just before the rapture or at the time, or is it the tribulation period itself? And Dr. Wilkins says it absolutely. He's got a great argument that it's not. And then um, you go to this text expl explicitly stating where the return, resurrection, and rapture all occur simultaneously. And I'd read earlier uh, in a lesson, previous lesson, where I think it's the Berean Bible Society says to suggest that the return and the rapture are the same thing uh, is, um, I can't remember, it's not sound doctrine or something like that. And then Revelation 3.10, temporal sense. So I will keep you out from or from that hour onward, I will be keeping it hearing. Remember, they'll be tried out and we'll be kept out, which is interesting. Of course, I didn't intend to translate it that way. It's just this is a trial where something's being tried out and we're being kept out. So there's quite a difference in that. And then, of course, uh, the last thing is there is no, there's no possibility that we could uh, find an import take so we read, I will keep you out from it. And then we uh, pre preach or teach or assert that it's the same as being taken out from it. And But we have a word for that. So uh, this has been very good. It's been very brief, but we've come back full circle and we've seen how much we can uh, center ourselves on just one text and see how much we can come to conclude. And again, you'll have to go and rank for yourself, the things in, in each of these positions. I'm just doing it because I did not know this. I certainly did not know this. This was always difficult for me. Uh, I had not even bothered to evaluate before the temporal reality of this term, ek, and then I have never written into it what sometimes I've taught into it. So you have a blessed day. Enjoy this lesson, and I hope these uh, four brief videos help. Uh, direct you toward the language and more careful in um, just a blanket statement about pre-trib because they don't agree. Mid and post agree on seventh and last trumpet. I didn't know that. So you can see this for yourself. I don't want to belabor the point. So you have a blessed day. Enjoy this lesson.